first episode. <laughs> nah, plan. I ain't gonna fucking start like that, bro. All right, man. It's the first episode of the WBOB podcast. I'm your host, Mellow15. I got my co-host. And we're live. Hell yeah, man. It's hella crazy that we're actually doing this, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long ago do we uh have plans to do this podcast? We, like, nine months, dude. Crazy, huh? Nine months. I, and I know you guys can see a lot of what's going on off camera, but a lot of fucking mm-hmm. effort went into this one. Crazy effort, man. I wish you guys could see all the... All the pop figures we have, all the posters. So clearly I have that issues because mm-hmm. this whole room's full of freaking pop figures. But uh, yeah, so a lot of work, um, a lot of money, really getting into this. So the crazy thing is though, my, my coworkers probably hate me, bro. All, all I did this last like nine, eight Just months. Just fucking spam everyone. Spam was like, hey, my podcast, my podcast. Like, uh, people would be like, hey, uh, so like, I don't have money for lunch. Well, what about my pot? You know, like it was probably a hell yeah. annoying them, dude. <laughs> um, for the first episode, we got a fan Q and A. Shout out to everyone that gave us some questions, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I know not a lot of people hit yeah. you up. Well, yeah, I want, actually, I want to take this second to like really thank you guys for sending your, sending in your questions because it really mean, means a lot to me and Jay. Um, you know, I know this is our first episode. People are probably wondering what this is actually going to be about. Mm-hmm. Basically, we're going to be talking about music, local music, sports, anything pop culture, pop culture related, like anything big that's happening. Mm-hmm. So um we're gonna yeah, start we're off with the first question just by dive the right into this shit yeah so uh first question and uh i apologize in advance yeah. <laughs> if we butcher your guys' names yeah. i know we know a lot of you personally yeah. so that's even a bigger apology yeah it's not um, it's not your guys' fault that your mom your mom's named you after your guys' ig name so yeah you know what i mean <laughs> uh first question is going to be from amanda mccullough shout out to amanda yeah and the first question that we got coming from her is going to be well i guess it's more of like a <clears throat> It is a question. So it says, let everyone know how y'all got your start and what made you passionate about your music. That's a good one, man. That's a fucking fire question to start off with. Um, start, as far as music goes, um, you yeah, started I before s- any of us. Yeah, man. I, I was, I've been rapping since like 6th, 7th grade. Like, I don't even... I think I was just like an angry preteen. Like, really just sitting in my room on some B rabbit shit, dude. Like, and I started because you started. Mm-hmm. And it was actually more because you, Jamal, Zach, all of us just all of you guys just started rapping. Yeah. It's more like a peer pressure thing, honestly. They kind of <laughs> got me into it. Can you imagine like someone like with a gun to your head? Hey yo, hey yo, you gonna be a rap? <laughs> yeah, no. So like I started, I started writing because you guys started writing. Yep. And then one sec, I got some people. They were like, "Oh shit, you're actually good, and What's, you should work on this." Do you this. remember and what song you uh, first wrote to? We started to the Beamer Benz and Bentley beat. Yeah, dude. By the way, the beat to the Beamer Benz and Bentley. History right there. History. Yeah. I'll let you guys know something right now. When this guy fucking brought me his verse and he showed me what he had to that song, I knew it, dude. I knew it from that second he showed me. I knew it, this was gonna happen. Yeah. So then that actually kind of segues into what the second part about what she said is what makes you passionate about your music is yeah. just the drive to get better. Like, literally, every single song, every single beat, every single time you, like, make something, you're like, oh, I could have done better by doing this. Oh, damn, I should have said that. Or, and I can say that in the next one. And every little thing, you just want to, like, uh... The crazy thing is, yeah, like, I I used to fill those composition notebooks. I used to just fill them up with lyrics. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever dated me and broke up with me... I just know that you're probably in those <laughs> you're probably in those notebooks. I probably wrote some like Kim you know when Eminem did that Kim song? I probably yeah. have like five of those, six of those in there. So the crazy thing is what what makes me passionate still about all this is that every year me and you progress. Mm-hmm. It's not just like That's what I was that's what yeah. I was leading to. It's like every everything that you do, every new song, every new yeah. mix, every new bar every new this you you want to get better you should want to get better and the thing is too like i don't want to make it sound like it's like a drug Mm -hmm. but honestly bro like it feels like a high every single time you come up with a song every single time i show you a verse like we've poured our heart into it Mm -hmm. and i i love showing our friends and everybody our new music that means a lot to me if you if you ever listen to any of our songs and you took the time to like share it or like it i appreciate you because we spend so much time you guys have no idea like people have like this view of artists right where it's like oh you're just a rapper and like no like literally guys we spend time away from our families to do this yeah like you know we could be spending time with our girlfriends i actually have a song kids. that dropped somewhat recently i suppose well, I, we've been fucking acid dropping music but 
uh, 3.22 a.m. And I actually named the song 3.22 a.m. Because I wrote, I started writing it at 3.22 a.m. Yeah. I don't know if you guys, when you pull up your notes and it tells you, you know, when the last time your note changed or when you started it, something like that. It was 3.22. And I couldn't come yeah. up with a title for this shit. So I'm like, yeah, that's what we're naming it. You know, people don't understand the like, not even just rappers, bro. Like if you're like in a band or you do anything and you're up at four in the morning when you should be sleeping. Mm-hmm. You know, you have kids that are like up or you have kids that are sleeping and you have to take care of them. Like, you don't understand. Like, it's super hard to do this. That's mm-hmm. also what I'm passionate about because we're trying to take care of our family. We're trying to feed our family. Like, yeah. and it's a really good driving force of why we why we even started this. Yeah, um, to basically just sum it up is, yeah, you should want to get better at something that you love to do. I yeah. love to do it. We love to do yeah, it. So yeah. just aim to get better. Study it. Learn it. Whatever it is you're doing, hone that. Yeah, that so Amanda, that was a great first question, by the way. So and yeah, the shout co- out Amanda. Cool thing about that, Amanda, is you're literally the first question that we answered in the history of this podcast. That's cool. Uh, so second question, guys, comes from Molly Copeland. Hopefully, I said that right, Molly. Uh, her question is, what specific struggle slash hardship do you feel made you the person you are today? That's a good question. That's a nice question. What do you got? I mean, for me, what I would say is, you know, just me and you growing up with like, like the struggles that mom went through and. Having like you know a stepdad who was not really nice trash. to us, <laughs> it's trash as stepdad. I have actually a funny story to tell you about that. Like I think that's what made me such the troll I am today. It's just having a stepdad who was so angry about everything. Like you can't even Spread breathe. A nitpick under his skin. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you're going to get a you're going to get a cup of Kool Aid from the counter or the kitchen, whatever. And this guy goes, "Did you just breathe? Huh? Who told you you could breathe in my?" <laughs> I know, bro. I think that's what like that i i can kind of say like those situations made me who i am today like i'm just like a strong individual sorry strong individual who i i can really account for a lot of the reason i am the man today because of that situation so um what i would say and i don't like to blame seattle because i know that there's like a super stigma of like oh, it's, it's not just seattle but like i feel like seattle is like super non-supportive of like fucking anything you do out here honestly and that just comes from my personal experience so i feel like the struggle of living in seattle trying to do something and then have somebody tell you or you know you, you can't do it or that you shouldn't do it or you're a vulture and a whatever boy, the fuck it, yeah just the lack of support here kind of shapes you because like for me personally you um not you but for me personally when people tell you that that you can't do something or that, you know, when you want to collab on something or do something, keep saying something, um, you take it upon yourself to do it yourself. It's like a chip on your shoulder. Yeah. So like if someone says, hey, I'm not trying to do this with you, like, cool, I'll do it myself. Uh, you know, I want to do this. Uh, you can't or you shouldn't. All right, cool. Fuck it. I'm going to do it anyway. If you're not trying to join me, I'm going to do that shit myself. So that's, that's for me, good. I'm a real mm-hmm. myself individual because yeah. that's what I had to I We you had, had to, to do, do it. it. Yeah. If no one's going to help you. Fuck it, do it. If you make the dream come true by yourself. You remember all those people that used to be like, "Oh, you guys are whack, you guys suck." Now look at them. Mm-hmm. Like and uh, and not and and this is nobody. Like that wasn't aimed at anybody in particular. Then not really, but there's because like, yeah. there's so many there's people so that many have done that. that. Yeah, and like you know, all the people who are like, "Oh, you and your brother are whack," that fueled me. Like I, you know, most people would have stopped, but that didn't make me stop. That make that made me want to continue. When all the times I'm on Instagram, right? I don't know if, you know, you guys have me on Instagram probably, but like I'll do comedian videos or I'll try to do rap videos because that's what I love to do. Mm-hmm. People are like, oh, you're not funny, Andrew. You're not You're not this and that. Cool. Then stop watching me then, bro. Like, what, like I, this is what I want to do with my life. And that just drives me to become better at what I'm doing. Yeah. So what she was saying was, you know, what struggle kind of shaped you into the struggle of not being supported. Yeah. Like it, you have to take it upon yourself to get it done one way or another. Yeah. And I feel like that kind of shaped me in a, a beautiful way, honestly. Well, thank you for that, Molly. Uh, that was a really nice question, by the way. Shout out, Molly. Um, so third question. Uh, I'm so sorry, Grandpa David. He, uh, he's going to kill us for butchering his name, so I'm not even going to try. But his question is, who are your biggest music influences and how so? That's a good question, by the way. Because I feel like influence, for me in particular, like, <coughs> I didn't grow up in, like, the 80s and 90s. So mm. my influences are different from what his his would probably be and what other adults is. My influences to me, I, if, if I'm going to pick a 90s musician, I would say Tupac. Like, you know, songs like Dear Mama, Keep Your Head Up, that influenced me. Like, this is the content. It's the pure, raw emotion of what you're talking about. 
you know, you're not talking about just drug dealing and and like taking drugs and beating women and all that stuff. Like I'm not sure. I'm probably there's not a song that does that, but mm -hmm. you know, as that's a, the stigma that yeah, rap has, though. As a kid, my mind was formed from that. It's like wow, like you know, you're you're trying to empower your people. You're trying to empower a group of individuals that are looked down upon. And I really, to me, that's awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. A second person I could say that's like newer age rapper is Drake. You guys probably know like these guys are hella gonna laugh at me. The, the Drake comments, but, stand. Yeah, like I'm a Drake. I would consider myself like a, a super Drake fan. You know, I think this guy when he sings, when he raps, like it's just it's super refreshing to see that. And he still tries, man. Like, he still tries to put out really good content. And he's still, like, how many years? He's been on top for, like, since being you in high school. I think the first time I heard a Drake song was, like, 2009, 2008. I think it was, like, 2000, the end of, like, 2000, the summer of 2008, after my eighth grade year. I think it was the first time I heard a Drake song, which was uh, probably Ransom, yeah. or best I ever had. People are like, oh, the Degrassi guy made a rap song with Lil Wayne. We're like, yeah. what? I would say uh, The Weeknd and Adele. Just because, like, especially for Adele, like, she's really good at singing raw. Like, when you hear her on stage, it's not, like... Exactly how it would be in the studio. Yeah, and, like, it's crazy how much talent she has. And, like, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, based off what I've read on her credits, that she's really write, writing her own music. And I really appreciate that as an artist. Mm -hmm. Because little did these guys know, like, you literally are in your room or in your studio just writing... And you don't even know if people are going to like it. That's the shitty part. It's like, you don't know what you're writing. Pour your, like, your heart and soul into something. Yeah. Just that, oh. So those are my musical influences. What about you? Um, I really don't have any in particular, to be honest. I think it's more of like a moment kind of thing. Um, I feel like every few years, and this goes back to as far as I can remember, like every few years, a new sound or a new wave um a new just like vibe of music kind of like breaks or like gets its foot through the door so like the same influence that you had mentioned earlier that the people in the early 2000s had was probably tupac mm -hmm. and tupac probably had his influences from prior years before so like you know in 2019 my influence isn't going to be some dude who rapped in the 80s yeah. like the, i'm I don't, i'm not influenced by him to make that same style of music so it's more of like you know um who am I? I don't know. Influences now is just like like the Florida scene that came out. X, you mean like, Ski you mean like Mask, Pump, Pump and all them, yeah. the SoundCloud rap, and like the way that they have like those Ronnie J style, like hard hitting bass songs. Yeah. Uh, I really fuck with that. Um, and I'm pretty sure they had influences from prior years. Like Drake, how you had mentioned before, just the whole singing, rapping thing. People have sung and rapped before him, mm -hmm. but he kind of elevated that to a whole like upper echelon level of like that style of music. Yeah, he owned it. He owns it now. And know? I think that you should have new influences every so and then, because like I said, if you if your if your main influence of music is some dude that rapped like twenty years ago, you're not gonna try to emulate that and get influence from that. So I think that you should have all kinds of people who continue to influence you and brand new people that get introduced to you that you they influence you because of the new stuff that they bring to you so um that's good yeah like i said like the florida scene what they're doing now uh new york is kind of back up and they're starting to do uh new york has kind of always been like that but like southern rap they're kind of just i don't know anything it's like a big boiling pot of like new wave music the hey, west coast you. too man west coast As, they're on the up. rise mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think i think if you know speaking of influences like in music i think like the the East Coast rap scene has always been kind of like the mecca of rap. Hip-hop in general, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, and then, it, you know, the South was very, very popular in from like the like, 2000s. Yeah, from like, oh, oh four to like, when did, South, Southern hip-hop really never fell off. But it, I wouldn't say, they, yeah. did, it died down from like that super buzz that they had yeah, back in like middle had, school. And I know for me, like the West Coast now, like, you know, a lot of West Coast rappers are starting to become super huge too. And I'm really mm -hmm. proud of them on, on all that stuff, so... Yeah, um, thank you, Grandpa David, for that question, mm -hmm. by the way. Uh, fourth question coming in from Nestor. And Nestor's question is, um, why do you think everyone has become so sensitive about everything? Well, that's a good fucking question, Nestor, because I'm pretty sure people are going to be sensitive about anything you say. But uh, I think, to be honest with you, Jay, like, I think a lot of people have become so sensitive because social media. Like, if you notice... I think people have always been sensitive. Yeah. So, again, yeah. Like, so, that's true. I think so. the rise of social media gave everyone a voice. And everybody feels like their voice is, is important. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm not even trying to be rude to people. Nah, right? I think they kind of overdo it too, to be honest with you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm not even trying to be mean, right? Because this is no way I'm not trying to be rude to people. But, like, no, but not everybody's voice is important. Like, if you're a racist piece of shit, like, you, just because you're, what you're saying is racist doesn't mean that's, that it's important. Or just because you're offended because, oh, I'm offended because you said a certain word on TV. Like, that doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, people might agree with you, but I, I feel like the rise of social media just gave too many people, like, a voice. You know what's crazy? I think it's just brought awareness to it because, like, I pretty, I'm like I said, I'm pretty sure everyone in all types of time periods have just been offended, but no one knew that because no one heard their voice. So now I think it's yeah, a, yeah. So like now when someone's like, oh, you said that fucking you you said fuck, you know, like yeah, cool, like what, what what is something that someone? Uh, what's the most like recent offense thing? I I would say like. I guess, like, people get offended, like, I'm not going to say the F word, but it's, you know, derogatory towards... Oh, yeah, so, like, you know, th- that's been a thing forever, and since fucking, I don't, I don't know, probably the 40s, 50s, uh, 60s, who uh-huh. knows, that's been a word forever, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure plenty of people have been offended by it, and no one really knew or no one really cared, yeah. and now people are like, oh, wow, everyone's so offended by this word... I'm pretty sure they've always been, but now the social media gave them... It's more like a like social a media thing, yeah, I guess. Yeah, gave, they gave them a platform. Another thing that you could say about people being so sensitive, it's like... <clears throat> they want they want people to validate them. It's like, oh, I want to be validated. So even with music, by the way, you could say that about music. Like, people are like... I me and you were talking about this one day, but we're like, oh... Like Eminem, right? For sure. For instance, mm. for sure, he's one of the one of the rappers that you can say was hit with that. What? Like the whole, oh, P.E. Keys. You know, like in his old music? He oh, could, what, you he couldn't t- do that what he talked about, yeah. Yeah, you couldn't. Like, back then, his music was fire to me. Like, we grew yeah, up Yeah, but on the, I wouldn't blame that on social media. So I guess the social media thing only plays a small factor into it. Because I'm pretty sure his fan base, they, still they it. yeah, they still like it. You still could make music for that fan base, but it's like the general population that's like, oh, that's not acceptable now. Yeah, like, just people in general. And I think a lot of it has to do... Uh, who, who would you say is more sensitive like the older crowd or the younger crowd i think both are i can't even decide like old people just get sensitive about like the smallest things but well, i think it's the old people that get offended by the younger people yeah. well obviously they're gonna be younger because they're mm-hmm. not but like you know the old people will be like oh um why are you doing this what? Uh, colored hair and tattoos? yeah you have pink hair yeah. why do you have pink hair back in my day you pink could... hair and but it's like hey you know, this isn't the fucking 20s. Yeah, and, I don't know. The future is now, old yeah. man. <laughs> All right, so uh, that was a very yeah, good question. Yeah, I don't question, really know Esther. how to answer that question, yeah. Esther. I feel like people always have been sensitive, and now it's amplified by social media. But at the same time, there there's people that are getting sensitive over yeah. some dumb ass stuff that I have no answer for. Like, you literally can't control what people say. Like, yeah. So I would just stop getting sensitive unless it literally affects you. You can't get yeah. movie roles because you're not black enough or you're too black. You can't get movie roles because you're not the right... People are losing their jobs because they say something on Twitter. Like, fuck, kind of from 10 years ago. Yeah. Like, I sensitivity mean, is kind of weird, man. I kind of understand. Like, I'm not saying... be like I don't like people who are racist and, like, bigoted and all that stuff, mm-hmm. but... You know, you just got to watch what you say, man, I guess, because people are look out, out here... Someone's like watching. Person. Someone's digging. Fire question, Esther. Shout so, out, Nessie Ness. All right, let's get to our fifth one. We got Brandon coming in from so, everywhere, I guess. Yeah, everywhere, pause. Brandon. Yeah, pause. All right, so <laughs> why didn't Seattle run at the one? Dude, I think I'm the perfect person to answer that question. Yeah, why didn't they run at the Let one? Let me tell you a story, man. So that Super Bowl, by the way, the Seahawks versus the Patriots, I remember going out, right? I buy a Cuban cigar. So they're not they're not fucking cheap by the way. Prepping, prepping for you know the I mean? W. Yeah, and I be I get like this huge bottle of like expensive liquor, dude. I'm like ready to fucking roll, bro. Like I'm like this is it. I remember going on Facebook that week and I'm like, yeah. And if if the Seahawks lose, I'm getting a tattoo of the Patriots. I was like fucking, I was pumped, dude. Talking all shit. I was talking hella shit, and I know Brandon. I was trolling Brandon like the whole week. That's that's cool that you asked that, Brandon, because I was trolling this guy the whole week. I even made a bet with them that I didn't even. I think I'm I. I made up the bet like a year later or something like that, but I, but yeah, I was hella trash when it came to that bet. Um, so the game starts. They st- so the Seahawks they start with that same song. Uh, what whatever that song is. Bittersweet Symphony. Yeah, they so they come out to that song right, and I'm already like four Coronas in. So when that song starts playing, I'm getting goosebumps. So I'm on the house like yeah, you know, there's some hella going off. 
you know, the game starts off kind of slow for settle, <coughs> whatever. Let's just skip to the end. So, you know, Jermaine Curse, bro. When Jermaine Curse made that light catch, I know you saw it. I remember, I was shaking you. Remember, I was like, yeah, this is it. And the, and you know what the thing is? The announcer, too. This guy hella fucking pumped me up. This is the team of destiny. And, like, I'm sitting there like, oh, my God, do we are. Like, I'm sitting there tearing up. Russell Wilson has, like, a beard. He looks hella fucking, like, homeless. But, like, he's our homeless quarterback, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, they give the ball to Lynch. He takes it to the one, right? So, I remember... Before the play starts, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. He's not, like, I, I said not to run. I was like, oh, you guys should do, like, a play action or you do a rollout, right? Because then if you're about to get sacked, you throw it away or you run it. You have a bunch of options when you do a rollout, okay? Because you're at the one. And then when he, that play happens and it's like, it's a pick, Malcolm Butler, and, you know, all that stuff, I was just like. Why didn't you run at the one, Seattle? Why the fuck did you not run at the one, you guys bro? got the best running back in the league. You don't run. <sighs> and then everybody made fucking fun of me. Brandon came home. I know this guy was fucking partying on my expense. And I had the, I had that Cuban cigar still, remember? I'm out there on the porch fucking smoking it. Like, oh, hello, smoking depressed. Smoking sad boy Cuban. Honest to God, I was not okay for like two weeks. Literally, I would like, I was depressed. I couldn't sleep. Every time I was at work, I was just like, man, fuck y'all, dude. Every, every, anybody could get it, dude, at this point. I still see comments under, like, yeah. fucking IG and Reddit and shit. Like, <laughs> don't let this distract you from Seattle. the fact Seattle didn't run at the one. Yeah, like, you stupid Y'all deserve that shit, to, honestly. You stupid fuckers have to remind me every time I go on. Like, it's about, it's like an ad for bleach. Oh, cool. I wonder what people have to say about this bleach. Oh, I don't let this distract you. Why, why didn't Seattle run from the one? Mm-hmm. Thank you, stupid idiot. Why don't you ask Pete Carroll that stupid fucking question? Yeah, Brandon's all hella smirking. I guarantee he's going to smirk watching this fucking episode, too. Mm. And you know what, what? What does Pete Carroll say to that? Hey, Pete Carroll, why don't you give it to your best... The best running back in the league, why don't you give it to him for the one? He's like, ah, uh, I don't know. Uh, just trying to give Russell the MVP. <laughs> it's so, it's just, oh, God, dude. All right, man. Shout man. out, Brandon, for the question. Yeah. Uh, next question we got is from Benjamin Amesqua. What movie are you more excited for, Avengers Endgame or Star Wars Episode Nine? Oh my God! And bro, which one do you f- think will have a bigger box office success? Fire question, Ben. By the way, and everybody. So, um, I'll start it off, man. Uh, so you guys are probably gonna, you guys are probably gonna, f- future episodes. I'm a big Star Wars guy, huge Star Wars guy. It's like my thing, dude. Like I love fucking Star Wars. I love Marvel. I, I to me, man, it. If Episode 8, The Last Jedi, didn't get the mixed reviews that it got, I think Episode 9 would have been bigger. Now you think people are scared to watch it because the yeah. last one was trash? Yeah, so I think what people are going to do is people are going to be like, oh, I think if we're going off the last two movies, okay? So we mm-hmm. have Infinity War, Episode 8. Infinity War was better. So there's a bigger expectation going into Endgame. So it's like, oh, you know, M- Endgame's probably going to be better. I think, personally... The episode nine will be sleeper better, so like it'll sneak up on everybody. I think box office wise, Endgame will make more money. I think, I think Endgame will make way more money. You know, but that's just me. I think I might just come out and say, it, dude. I think Endgame might might be top three highest grossing movie of all time. It might be. It might just be fucking Titanic, dude. Because I think, think Titanic's it, like number two. Yeah. So I I I'm. Which is really fucking weird that Titanic is number two. Just throwing that out there. Can you imagine? Back in the day, that's crazy, dude. And James Cameron talks hella shit about those type of movies too. It's hella weird. Uh, I think he made like two point six billion dollars or some shit about, money, about a movie dude. about a boat crashing. Come yeah, on, now. Dude. Uh, I think Episode Nine has the potential because J.J. Abrams is directing it, and you know he's super big on like nostalgia and like in like just getting. I know he's gonna make it right for us, and I know we're gonna have. A, I've already seen some of the leaked posters for Episode Nine. Just like I'm, I'm on Reddit every day. That you already know, like these things are, it's gonna work out, man. So, mm-hmm. what, who do you, th- what do you think's making higher in the box office? Avengers, hands yeah. down. Uh-huh. I mean, Star Wars has like a bunch of fans and shit, but no, I yeah, think Avengers will blow that shit out of the water. So that was actually an amazing question, Ben. Uh, seventh question, uh, we have it from Cole, and his qu- his question is kind of funny. His question is, uh, why are trash artists like Six Nine and Lil Pump so popular? You want to answer that, Jay? Or <laughs> all right. So first of all. Right. I know that they're trash, okay? I know the little pump is trash. <laughs> Six nine. I, I really don't, don't think I don't think he's trash, but I I obviously know he's not for everyone. 
okay yeah. so like if you're gonna say six nine is trash cool i get it yeah but i don't get it at the same time it's kind of a weird one for me Lil pump i definitely know he's not good anyway whatsoever lyrically but they make bangers yeah just that's it's the beats it it's the energy there, it's the it's the the getting ignorant it's the colored hair shaking it's like the you want to not want to be them but you you want to he has a song like me everybody I know, wanna I know. be like me you don't want to be them, but you're like, oh, damn, I want to be around that energy. It's the energy that they put into it, honestly. That's what artists in general, we need to get energy. on that kind of shit. Yeah, you need to bring energy. If you got some high-ass energy on a good-ass beat, I guarantee you 99 people out of 100 are going to sound good on that. Yeah, I Not think... to mention the meme potential. They're like walking memes, dude. When you ask people like, hey, why do you think 6 9 is trash, right? Mm-hmm. This. This is their response every time. Oh, he, he... He screams and he has rainbow hair and it's like, dude, shut the fuck up, dude. You can name hella rappers that, that scream. scream. Yeah. So the screaming, it, shut up. Like, it's not the screaming, dude. Just say it. You don't like a Mexican kid with tats all over his face and rainbow hair. Mm -hmm. And he was throwing up blood, the blood gang signs. He was part of a blood gang. No one had ever seen that before. You have this rainbow haired kid talking, telling everybody to suck his dick you know, wilding out my, on Instagram. Yeah, and like he would tell people, "Suck my fucking dick, stupid," <laughs> and like no one did anything to him. Like well, the feds did, but like no one else did anything to him. I, I honestly think that's why people don't like Six Nine. You know, because like, the arrogance of yeah, it like, all. He's not a mumble rapper, okay? Mm -hmm. So lyrically, he's not like. But in the fun and the fun, like okay, that's a little pump. I mean, I mean, I mean. Yeah, no, just for just for the record, okay. Lil Pump is trash to me. I've never said he was. Yeah, like, lyrically, lyrically he's trash. trash. But like, I feel like if you go into a Lil Pump song expecting to hear some like woke content, lyrical miracle shit. Yeah, like you know, preaching about the struggle and you know life, and you're not gonna hear that. Don't go that. into a Lil Pump song expecting that. That's probably why you think he's trash. It's because you hear him say some stupid shit like. What you know, you I'm off song? a molly, I'm off a bean, and you're like, oh wow, that's trash. Like, <laughs> oh. no, but if you're if you're in the you know if you're in that type of mood, and you're like, oh shit, I'm Ooh. trying to be off a of molly too, then then you're gonna think that song's cool. I know Emily gets hella annoyed because we'll, we'll we'll be listening to his songs on YouTube, mm -hmm. and he's like, I'm a millionaire, but I don't know how to read. It's like yeah. that's hella fucking stupid to say, that, but I think most that's funny. The, the recent Lil Pump album, the uh, I can't even defend that one, yeah, dude. No, that one, that one is a big ass yikes in my opinion. First but previous, like yeah. first year Lil Pump. Yeah, he's trash. But like, if you have to have the mindset of you have to go into it with you know being just as ignorant as he is. Hella ignorant, bro. All right, Cole. Fire question, my man. All right, we're going to our eighth question. Uh, Levi, be chill, my man. Levi, what's up, good man? Um, so his question is, what are your top five rappers currently? That is, I can't even explain to you. It's not. It's not a hard question. Okay. I feel like yeah. Uh, it's hard because currently, when you say currently, you have to think of people who have made music in the last eight months to a year. Yeah, I would say that. That's true. Yep. Currently, yeah, because it like, so in my opinion, Jay Z, right? Obviously, a top five dude, but he hasn't time. made music by himself in since when was the four, last? Yeah. yeah, which was what like two about, plus years about, ago. Yeah, about. A I mean, he he had that dual album with him and Beyonce, but I wouldn't even count I that. I wouldn't count yeah. that as a Jay-Z project. Yeah. So, like, if I was to put him currently, I couldn't put him currently. Even though I clearly know Jay-Z is that dude as far as, like, hip-hop legacy goes. But if you were, like, to tell me currently who's, the, like, the more popping artist between him or someone like a, like a J. Cole. Like, yeah. clearly J. Cole is the bigger artist currently if you're talking, like, oh, as yeah. a status. Cause I think I think people get it mistaken, like legacy, and all time. Yeah, Jay Z is, is the bigger artist when it comes to his legacy all time. Right but now. if you're talking about current, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for my list, right? You mm -hmm. know, I did some thinking. People might not like my list, but I don't really give a fuck because it's not your podcast. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I put Drake. Mm -hmm. uh, t so mine aren't numbered, okay? But for me, Drake would be you number mean one. They're not in a yeah a it's, order. It's not an order. Drake would be number one for me. For okay. me though, so. He's just he took over 2018, man, and I don't even like the whole controversy about like him texting that girl from the Strangers thing. That that's that's just people trying to take him down, bro. Honestly, to me, he had like the best features. No, I think he, I I would I, he probably does do that, but I think that people take that. They took it out of proportion. Like it's they made it weirder than it had to be. Like they're and both it didn't even slow him down. Though. Yeah, uh, he had the whole kid controversy this year. 
the whole Pusha T diss track. I, mm-hmm. So to me, he, he had the best features. Scorpion was a good album to me. Uh, I had 21 Savage on this list for a good year. He really did, man. He surprised me. He had a good album, good content, good features. Like the whole thing yeah, was Yeah, we just got solid. Woke 21 Savage yeah, now. Yeah, Woke 21 Savage. Oh, and he's from, what is he from again? Huh. Uh, he got the, he was about to get the, he got. He oh, was something like England or British. Yeah, or so, not British isn't a place, Britain. Yeah, but so we got woke. He's got exposed for being British. <laughs> uh, Jay Cool had a good year, nice project. He's always had like solid projects, man. To me, I'm not, I'm not super into like the conscious side of rap, but I I can appreciate it. Cool had a good year. Uh, Eminem with Kamikaze, uh, and just I think in the whole interview thing he did about the MGK. Remember how? Oh, he, you did the sway one. Yeah. yeah, and like this, the whole MGK diss. It was like vintage Eminem, and I actually, I actually thought that was refreshing. Uh, so this last one, I think people might not like it. They're not gonna like it, but I, I put XXX and Tentacion. Mm-hmm. You know, he he's passed away, so rest in peace to him. Um, and regardless of how you guys feel about his past, but he, he had he had an album that he had dropped prior to his death, and he's had album. Yeah. I think he's had two right skins and. No, he's had music aside from yeah. skins, but he's had music that's came out. And he but, had that song yeah. with uh, Pump and Sway Lee and all them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, rest in peace to him. And I'm not going to judge him on what he did before he died because that's not what I'm about at all. I'm not about to speak on someone who's dead. Mm-hmm. You know, but I But feel, you think that what he yeah, did. He was on a trajectory. Tra- yeah. He was on his way to becoming something great. Yeah, he was already trying to make himself better as a. He person. was already outselling yeah. people that yeah. were already established names. And you know, it's just sad that he passed away young. But yeah, that's my mm-hmm. list, man. So, what do you got for yours? Uh, mine is mine is in order, but it's not in order. So the only person that I put in order is Drake, as number one because 2018 is a non-debatable for me that Drake ran that whole entire year. Yeah. You can't name an artist that did more numbers. They had more charting hits. Mm-hmm. Um, his tour with the Migos is like the biggest grossing tour Features. like ever. Uh, I, th- I think now it's the Travis Scott tour that he did with the. I'd have to look that up. I should have looked that up. I apologize. Either way, Drake was involved. Um, yeah, him bringing I, you can't, into the game. Yeah, like everything, everything about 2018 and Drake was just boom, 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 boom. Um, so number one is him. Everything else isn't really in order because, like I said, currently is such a, a a gray area that I'm not sure how to you know explain the best. Um, J Cole definitely. Um, he has Middle Child now. The feature feature that he had with Twenty One. Um, he had that song. The feature that he did with JID. Uh, he's brother. just on his shit right now. You can't even deny that J Cole's in his bag. So currently. I have him, um, a boogie with the hoodie, and before you guys fucking crucify me for that one, if you think about what he dropped, I think it was the last week of December. So he dropped his album the last week of December, and since then that album has been number one for multiple weeks. He has multiple songs on the radio. Um, I know that he's doing big numbers as far as like, uh, not sales but streaming, just. I can't not put him in the top five because no other artist in the span of like four months besides like maybe Juice World or something has done bigger stuff than him success wise. Um, Travis Scott for that same reason um, since his I think came out in June or July as well. I'm pretty sure it was June. He had like the biggest song this year. Sick yeah, Sicko Mode yeah. was like a week away from breaking like the all time record for the longest in the top 10 of Billboard. Right. It's crazy. So like that as far as like the other hits he had uh, I fuck with Yosemite a lot. Um, it's his brand. His brand got super. Yeah, just ever shirt. since like the Kylie Jenner thing, the baby tour again, like him and Drake. I think it was. I think that's either the biggest grossing tour now, but just like as far as like the whole clout Kanye, and yeah, the whole Kanye and, and Drake beef actually kept his name up for a while too. So, mm-hmm. so I add Travis Scott on there. Um, I can't really pick a fifth one, just because, like I said, currently it's such a just a. If that question was worded differently, I might be able to give you a different answer. Um, and don't get me wrong, like I listen to way more people than that. That, like I said, currently is just such a weird word to me. Like, uh, and that's not lyricist either. Like, someone's probably be like, "Oh, you think a boogie is the best rapper?" Like, no, I'm just talking about what he's done success wise that made him pop in now. Uh, I still listen to people like um, 
Denzel Curry, Joyner Lucas, Ski Mask, The Slump God, Boogie, um, Mozzie, SOB, Shoreline, those guys, they're just not, you know, top five pop in right now but there's still people that i appreciate their lyrics what they do content wise and everything like that people like kendrick uh meek those guys are obviously like you know like we mentioned jay-z earlier they're top as far as what they do all time like kendrick's one of the best to ever do it but he hasn't came out with an album in like what a year or two years yeah, i don't know like that. he's just like lacking the music side which i'm pretty sure he'll drop an album this year and blow everything out the water no he did drop in a uh damn was last year wasn't it I think damn was like a year or two ago i'm not positive on that one but yeah but he's it's current like I like i said currently kendrick, kendrick hasn't kendrick dropped... working on a like i thought kendrick was doing more like he's work by the way i know you td fans are crazy by the way so and no disrespect to you guys because i love that camp i really do mm-hmm. but i thought kendrick was like wasn't he working more on SZA and J Rock's album this year? Like that's what he was doing, wasn't he? He was doing features on their stuff, yeah. He was making sure like they were good. Oh and yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, he did SZA have some features. Hmm. And I know he was a very big part of SZA and J Rock's new album that just came out, and he was really like focusing on like. Pushing oh, them. he had that feature on New Freezer too. Uh, I I probably throw Kendrick in there. Yeah, I, I didn't really Kendrick think a lot him. about what he did feature wise, which I, he killed New Freezer. I thought definitely. about everyone else's features, but him. That's kind of sucks, but. Yeah, um, I leave those by. are that just some a... top artists, but like I said, cur- I, currently is just such a weird word. Hi, my man, Levi. Thank you for the question. Um, so the ninth question comes to us from Lake Alley One, which, uh, thank you, Rachel, for that. I can't even, I don't even know if I pronounced it that right, but yeah. Right, shout out, Rachel. Yeah, so Rachel Champion's question is, what are your top Marvel movies? So let's put aside Endgame and Infinity War. Because those are no, those are no doubt the those best. Are no, yeah, those are no oh, doubt. They're gonna be the best. Be I, Infinity War, I would rank at the top, but since it's like, I guess it's a part one. Yeah, I will just yeah. The, Infinity War and Endgame will set those aside because those say, are clearly the the best. I would say Winter Soldier. This is in order. What? I'm not. This is not in order. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Like, it's hard to put stuff in order now. Like until I see Endgame, this is like so. Winter Soldier, the first Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy one, Homecoming. Which I know that people are gonna be like Homecoming, and especially my man Ricky over here, he hates that movie. By the way, Homecoming. Yeah, he hates Homecoming. How the fuck was Homecoming? I know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, he, you know, in his opinion, like he's a super big into comics, right? Mm-hmm. So like, when he tells me why he doesn't like something, I'm like, oh, okay, then that makes sense. So I, to me, I loved it. It was like our first good Spider-Man, our first true rendition of Spider-Man. Like you cannot argue that. That he was literally like Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. Every because you know, like in the other movies, you have like a fucking forty old man. Yeah, I didn't. Re- I mean, I liked the Spider Mans when they came out because I was like, oh, that's all we got. Yeah. But now that you see like what a good Spider Man is like, you realize that the other ones are fucking garbage. I would say in Civil War, I mean, Black Panther. I I'm, I feel really ashamed to tell you guys this, but I've never seen it, dude. And it's personal reasons. It's just, I didn't like what people turned it into. Mm-hmm. Um, I know it won some Oscars this year, and I'm actually super proud of them. You know, I probably should watch it. I'll probably watch it at the end of this podcast. It's on Netflix, dude. Yeah, I know. What did you, uh, what was your... I of... so actually wrote this down in order, uh-huh. okay? Because uh-huh. I actually have an order of what my top five would be. Um, Civil War is the top ranking one just because I don't know that fuck with that movie. Super fucking heavy. Everything from, like, the story, acting, everything about that movie was just top shit to me. Uh, Doctor Strange is my second one. Um, cause I, I even had this conversation with plenty of people like that. That was like this most slept on Marvel movie, yeah. probably of all the Marvel movies. And it was a badass movie at homecoming is third. I had a fuck with it. Uh, Ragnarok fourth and Iron Man one to fight. That's, that's the OG thing. movie. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you, started list, man. I, you know, so the thing with the thing is I actually forgot about Dr. Strange. Mm. That now that that's you mentioned it, yeah, that's one crazy, of the most dude. slept on movies they got. Um, uh, before we leave off on this question, so Iron Man 2 and 3 and I believe the first Captain America if I'm not mistaken I know people like it but to me uh, those and, ew, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 Guardians 2 oh my god dude when I it was not like trash but like it was so small and by small I mean like you're in this universe right mm-hmm. so you're in space there's all these worlds you're traveling and it just got it felt like it was just like I don't know how to explain it like it was like claustrophobic like they're on one like they're on like not even that many planets it's like Mm -hmm. the storyline has to be and i know like it was about his dad and all that so i didn't really like that one but yeah i mean the marvel movies until we see endgame but like i'm pretty sure endgame's gonna be on my top like there's no way dude 
And they even said that end, end game's gonna be more sad than the first one. Like, how do you fucking beat out everybody dying? Like, you know what I mean? Uh, half yeah. of the people dying. Yeah. Uh, everyone dies in this one. Yeah, everybody gets snapped away and Thanos is the only one. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like in the shower room, like, you know, like, hey, what am I doing here? All right, so um, thank you, Rachel, for that question. That was actually a pretty good question. Uh, tenth question comes from us to comes from us to A B Country Two Hundred Six. My man Axel, this guy, by the way, mm-hmm. it's funny that he asked this question. He asked the top five basketball players. It's funny because this guy should be of fucking, all time. Yeah, I, yeah, this guy should be fucking playing basketball, dude. Honestly, this guy Axel, my guy, he even knows. I even tell him when he's pulling pallets out at work. I'm like, bro, you're too, you're, you're too fucking tall, dude. Go, go get a fucking rebound. Go or get something, a fucking dude. rebound, dude. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing here? Like, you have so much potential. He literally probably can average a double-double in the NBA right now. Just go fucking stand under a hoop, dude. What are you doing? Like, what? you letting these guys tell you what to do? Like, but anyways, um, that's a great, great question, Axel, because to me, I took this list as you could say there's different variations of this list. Top five basketball players, right? For me, my man Kareem Abdul, mm-hmm. he won, I believe it was six titles. I'm, I'm very positive it was six titles. I'll fact check you right now. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, okay. So I believe it was six titles. Uh, he, the MVPs, just like he was part of the Showtime Lakers. Like he had the most points scored at, the, at a certain point, which I believe he still does. He does have the most points scored. Um, my second was Michael Jordan. Uh, Michael Jordan, just like what he did for the game of basketball, he changed it. You know, I don't like. No, it says he has six. Right? Oh, he has six? Mm-hmm. Cool. Oh, Cream? Hmm? Cream? Yeah. Yeah, see? So. He has the same amount as Jordan. He has scored more points than Jordan. Like, there's no, like, I guess he didn't change the game, but, you know. Like, yeah. I don't like Jordan as a person, but as a basketball player, I, I can't knock what he did for basketball. So, close yeah. to Jordan. Um, Third was m- my boy Magic Johnson. You know what I mean? Like, crazy, dude. And, again, he's part of the short-time Lakers. Crazy. Magic Johnson has transcended the point guard position. Uh, my Number four for me was Shaq. And a lot of people who agree with me on this, he he, name another player who was more dominant than him. Can you? Not he to Shaq, fucking no. fucking dominated, dude. There was like a spin. I see a lot of people try to argue, uh, who is it, Will Chamberlain? Uh-huh. But, but Shaq played with like... Yeah, uh, like, like the, that's, real, the, that's the thing yeah. is like, Will Chamberlain was hella, you know, that type of player. But yeah. then like the competition wasn't as crazy as what Shaq was playing with. So, uh-huh. uh, yeah. Uh, so for me, and then for five was LeBron, and and not mm-hmm. and that, that that shouldn't be a knock, by the way. I feel like LeBron will probably creep up my list when, but around the time he retires, he just uh, LeBron just such a good guy. Like there is no like controversy around him. You know he he wants to win championships. He's like you know he has very very good. He's not just a scorer. Like he he also gives the ball out. He can do assists. Like he's crazy good. So, uh, for this question, what did you put on your? Uh, so I didn't do a top five. Um, I wasn't sure if he, it was all time or not, but I did all time for. I can't really put them in order, or like how what they did and everything yeah. like that. But I, I created a top five if that was going to be a starting five that I think that nobody could beat them, right? So like my team, oh, okay. Sorry, that I put is position wise a starting five that would be unbeatable in my yeah. eyes. So for for point guard, I put Magic Johnson, and I would have had either Steph or AI as a backup, not backup, but in his place. But I feel like Magic being six eight, doing what I would, you yeah. know, he'd be more of a facilitator than a shooter or a scorer, which this team doesn't need. So a, f- a facilitator with the rest of these dudes would make everything flow. So I had Magic. Magic at one. Uh, I had Kobe at the two. I'm a we're Lakers fans, so yeah. a fuck yeah. MJ in my opinion. Yeah. Not as like a basketball player, yeah. but like you know, as a person. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. Kobe the goat, dude. So I had Kobe as the shooter. Shooter, uh, LeBron as a small forward, KD as the the power, and Shaq as the center. Cause That's what a we just talked fire about. Fire lineup, dude. No one's stopping Shaq. And I know I, who can come on. Let's be real, dude. Who could who could shit on your list, dude? Like haters. Honestly. I mean, you could probably like, oh, you know, oh, MJ over snake. Kobe or. Carl Malone, you know, I'm pretty sure anybody could, but that's just saying, if you have this starting five, it's going to be hard to pick another starting five that would be able to beat this starting five, in my opinion. I don't think you can, but... I don't think you could either. If you think you can, come. there's right. a comment section. All right, so me. thank you for that question, by the way. That's a, You guys had... See, the, these these guys had a very good question. Yeah, we appreciate you guys in the yeah, Q&A. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, mm. 
The last question comes from again Nestor. And this is kind of a topic that I think is super important in music today. So his question was, why is it that a female rapper like Cardi B can do the same thing as Bill Cosby to an extent, but isn't seen as wrong? I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. To what, be honest so with read, you. Sorry, read it one more time. So his question is, uh, by the way, Nestor, shout out Nestor. His question was, why is it that a female rapper like Cardi B did the same thing as Bill Cosby to an extent, but isn't seen as wrong? Mm-hmm. To me, this question is super important. Not in, Not only in music, but in life. I don't think people don't see it as wrong. I actually do think people see it as wrong. They do. No, I think people see it as wrong, they but do. they're like wondering like, hey, why is nothing happening? Yeah, because the thing is, we live in a culture where like, not a lot of women are known for that. Women are known for drugging men and like robbing them. Maybe they are. I could be wrong, right? But the, no one's known for that. So it's weird when you have someone as big as Cardi saying that she did that. Now, wasn't it on a podcast or it was like a video she did from years ago? So it wasn't she, like she was cur- like no, she was on her she was on her Instagram live. Yeah, it wasn't like current Cardi. It was like Cardi. From yeah, like, no, it, it yeah. was like before she like. I think up, it was right? from like three years ago. So this was definitely before she like blew, blew up. up. Yeah, yeah. And like, so again, this leads into another question that someone asked us about the sensitivity. Like, what are we gonna do? Like, this was hell a long ago. To me, three years is how long ago. I can barely remember. No, she did. I think she did the video three years Uh ago talking about things that she had done prior to that. So this is older, longer than three years ago. Okay, so that's crazy. So are we going to... So basically what he was saying is because to an extent she did what Bill Cosby did. She didn't rape nobody. She just drugged them and took their money. So what he did was drug and rape. She did drug and rob. Both are bad, man. I think Bill Cosby's is worse, but hers is equally as bad. Because think about it. What if a male rapper came out and said that? I used to drug bitches and rob them. Bro, he would not have a career. There is no fucking way a top rapper right now could come out and say that. A guy just said yeah. that? Yeah. There's no way. He would be, let's mute him, let's cancel him. Some R. Kelly show? Yeah, honest to God. And that it, is some R. Kelly show, yeah, honestly. It is. And the thing is, too, R. Ke- but R. Kelly like actually like sexually wronged women. So it's hard to compare this because we haven't met a male rapper who said, I drug women and robbed them. Well, she she didn't rape nobody, but she she used sex as a tool to rob as them. a weapon to to get them into that position. Which it's definitely not the same thing, but yeah, I don't know, dude. I think it's just because uh, I know she came out and apologized, so that's I don't know, man. Like I think she should like a, I had to do what I had to do kind of thing. Yeah, like I know Bill Cosby got in trouble for stuff that he did decades ago. So if he can get in trouble for that, she could too. If there, if there's an actual victim that comes out and says, I think oh, there has. Is there? I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. That's crazy. But somebody was like, "Hey, this." Uh, if he has proof, and he has proof that he tried to file police support or like anything, yeah, she should get in trouble for that, man. Because it now you're like now the double standard is set. Oh, we're gonna just cancel this guy, but we're not gonna cancel her. The difference is, though, is that these guys are, like, raping and, like, sexually wronging women. Like, she, she was sexually wronging them in a way, but she wasn't raping them. Like, they willingly went back and tried to have sex with her. So it's a different type of, like, it's hard to say, man. I don't, I don't, I don't want to... I think the only thing that she did, I mean, obviously robbing someone is wrong, but I think the only thing that she did, which would be, like, I guess morally wrong... Is drugging them. Is drugging them, yeah. Yeah. And to be honest with you, when I first heard this story break... I was like, please do not tell me that current Cardi, superstar current Cardi. Dragging people and robbing yeah, them? Yeah, no, I thought she was so fucking dumb if she currently said that. Like, if it was on Instagram Live a week ago, she's like, I used to fucking rob rob people and I used to fucking rob them and, and drug them. You know, like, I, dude, what? You're a fucking superstar, dude. Yeah. What are you doing? Like, you know, like when 6 Robbing nine, people in the first yeah, place. Yeah. Like, you know when 6 9 got in trouble for all the stuff he was doing? Like, bro, you're a fucking superstar. You're the biggest rapper right now, whether people like it or not. Why are you banging blood? Mm-hmm. Why the fuck are you robbing Running people? The streets and yeah. Yeah, dude. Like, someone needs to intervene. So, when I found out it was an old video of hers, I was like, damn, dude. Come on. Like, are we just going to keep bringing up old shit? You can literally do that for anybody, dude. You can do that for me. You can go on my Twitter and find out things that I've said that I'm not, I'm not proud of. So, it just sucks, man. I don't want to start this whole mute Cardi thing. But if we're going to... Do- well, I, mean, I think that... Well, I th- oh, yeah, so before... Uh, sorry for interrupting you. I think what the difference, in my opinion, is, right? Uh-huh. Is, like, Bill Cosby was drugging people, 
raping them i guess is the right term I, it is rape but yeah. i'm pretty sure there's a different thing for it it's based it's ra- yeah it's rape so he was doing that for the fuck of it hey i'm gonna do this yeah. i'm gonna get my nut off whatever but cardi was like hey i'm trying to come up i'm trying to I'm trying not to be broke. I'm trying not to be yeah. stripping. I'm trying to, you know, make money for this. And I'm trying to come up. I got to rob these people. I got to take my advantages when I can. Yeah. I'm going to do what I got to do. So maybe that's how people are looking at it. Like, I'm I, not mad because no, she had to do what she had to do. And in no way, that's guys, yeah. or, me yeah. and, or me and J.O., we're not condoning what yeah. Bill Cosby mm-hmm. and R. Kelly did, by the way. I think it's disgusting. Sarah R. Kelly. Both of them, Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, what that, what those guys, and she, what she did to an extent is disgusting, but not. I don't know. It's hard to explain, man. I don't. I don't want to say I'm condoning any of this, but I don't. I don't. But we both yeah. know, man, that if if that if a male rapper came out and said that same exact thing, it'd be canceled. Some him, jail right? time. Cancel him. Mm-hmm. People would want to cancel his music. So I think Cardi needs to like be. Bl- she's kind of like in a in a lucky spot, by, by the way, that she's a female artist. And I'm not saying because she's a female that people are overlooking this, but it seems like it. Either people are scared to say something, or people are just like they don't care. So th- there's something's happening. But you know, I'm always I'm always somebody who wants to give people second chances. If Cardi's sorry about doing that, and you know she wants to move on from it, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cancel her. But you know, I know that if a male rapper said that, I'd probably be like oh, yeah, they're done for. Like, what are you doing, dude? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. So um. We actually have a surprise question, by the way. So, actually, thank you, Nestor, for that question. So, our last question is just a simple one coming in from Emily, Emily Castillo. And uh, her question is, are you pro-life or pro-choice? That's simple for me, dude. Honestly, I would just say, are you pro-life or, like, abortion? Oh. Yeah, so, I, I think I don't have a uterus. Yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> so, I, do what you want. That might be a better question for a girl because, yeah, yeah I, I'm not a girl. It's your body, man. I'm not even trying to tell a girl what to do with her body. So, yeah. if, yeah. Um, that's just a simple question. Mm -hmm. And so it's your body. Yeah. I feel like you have the right to do what you want. Like, and I know people don't like that. The people aren't going to like that response, but I'm not about to, I'm not about to be one of those guys that tells women what to do with their body. That's kind of weird in the first place. Yeah. Can you imagine women telling us what to do with our body? Like we can't get, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's cringy that you try to tell a woman what to do with their body. Mm -hmm. And I know people who are religious are like, oh, but, but, but. God says, like, okay, well, then tell him to come down and say it to us. Then. I don't know. What do you want me to do? Uh, anyways, this is, like I said, first episode. We got the nerves out. Crazy, huh? Uh, what I do want to leave off with a thank you, guys. Anybody who sent yeah, a question big today. Thank you. Anybody super. who sent in fan questions. Yeah. You guys are the reason why this episode was what it was. And so during thanks. this episode, I was drinking the Angry Orchard. Mm-hmm. I wish we were their sponsor. I mean, they were uh, our sponsor. Like, I could do a, uh, what did Ricky Bobby do? If you're not drinking Orchard, oh, product if, placement. Yeah. If you're not drinking Angry Orchard, then fuck you. Yeah, soon, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Next year, we'll get an Angry Orchard placement. Hell yeah, man. Uh, if you guys made it to this point in the video, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. You got socials in the description. Yep. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us on all that stuff, up, man. So. Uh, like I said, thank you for this episode of the WPOB podcast. We will be back. I don't know about shooting schedules. Cause I I can't I don't want to we'll, make promises. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. work it out. Work it out. Um. Anyways, yeah. Follow us on social media. Hit us up, man. And thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.